Good afternoon and welcome to the penultimate Kerry Garden Show here on Radio Kerry. I'm Alan Finn, checking back in with you from Boils of Calorglin where I'm surrounded by lots of hedging. And that is going to be our main focus of the show today. We're going to be giving you lots of tips on what you could do to make your lovely garden, give it a nice formal or informal look. And the person who is going to be giving us all those expert tips Well, I've managed to find Trish in amongst all our hedging, which is going to be our topic here today on the Kerry Garden Show. Trish, 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 are you there? Are I'm you there? here, Alan, welcome, I'm here. Welcome, welcome, how are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. Good stuff, good stuff. We've got lots of uh, hedging here that we're going to talk about on the show at the moment. And it is probably a, a good time. Is it a good time at the moment to, yes. to think about hedging? Yeah, to think about hedging. Um, what we have in stock here today is potted hedging. Mm -hmm. A little bit later on, maybe in a couple of weeks' time, we'll have bare rooted hedging as well bare rooted means it wouldn't have the pot on it obviously it will have the roots it would be a little bit cheaper as well okay. um, but now is definitely the time to be thinking of it mm. like that you can see there's a dense in between <laughs> us why do we've we got put up hedging and all that yeah, I know that's a good question actually you know because a lot of people you know obviously would do use it maybe to, to hide an area of your garden or just to kind of you know kind of around the perimeter just to, to give it a bit more shape but it's also to keep the neighbours out. <laughs> keep the neighbours out. But the main objective of a hedge... The main objective, of course. <laughs> exactly, is to stop the wind coming in. Okay. So, like that, as you say, it's usually around the perimeter of the house, and it's usually on the border of your land or your area or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, it's like an area, this is my patch on the inside as well. Mm -hmm. But also, as well, it stops if you're in a very bleak area, and you're coming in, you're trying to plant shrubs, and everything is getting burnt alive. The first thing you should do after you build your house, put down your driveway put down your lawn is to put in your hedging then as well okay. and what do you mean by getting burnt alive when they get it, burnt so burnt. say for example you have no hedging up at all yeah. and you're living out in a seaside area maybe out Glen Bay or Ballybunion okay. or somewhere yeah. like that and you're planting your shrubs it's getting the full blunt of the wind okay. so you'd have to be very very particular of what shrubs you would plant if you didn't have hedging up or a windbreak netting or something up mm -hmm. so the first thing to do is to put up your hedging or your windbreak and that breaks the wind and then gradually work your way into the inside of the garden you could also put up trees then as well because yeah. they will filter the wind through then so as well so it literally is as you said it's, it's one of the first steps it is one of the do. first steps yeah. yes before now, you go developing the garden or any kind of beds exactly and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're in a very exposed area you have to think Think ahead like mm -hmm. and as I say everybody thinks hedging has to be evergreen it mm. has to be solid it has to block not necessarily you can plant your trees and even the branches then they will actually filter the wind and it'll actually break that wind so much then as well so it just filters it through and by the time it gets to your house okay it's gone like yeah. you know that sort of yeah, way as well easy. yes easy exactly and the types of hedging then as well too because you were telling me that you know there are two uh, real kind of uh, forms of hedging that you can kind of go for. That's right. You've got a formal hedge, which, for example, would be your grisolinia. You've got light green leathery leaf. It can grow X high and wide, and mm -hmm. you can just keep it all cut, and it looks lovely and neat. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the laurel, then, would be another formal hedge, it's then, the as well, down the front. Yeah, which okay. is the big leaf on it. And you also have the Escalonia, which has got a lovely pink flower. Here it is here. There it is, yeah. The lovely pink flower. Now, all of them can be very formal, but sometimes you might live out in the country area you don't want that real formal look you want it informal and when you say formal are you talking about like as in the it's kind like of stick, a wall, Alan. it sticks to a very kind of specific shape exactly. and a certain height exactly so that's what we mean when we say by formal yes, formal hedge that's okay it. Yeah, right right yeah, yeah. so these only as you said they would only grow to a certain what, well between? see the laurels can grow anything up to 20 30 feet if you leave them okay but you can keep them cut back, cut back then as well yeah. now we did a show a while back on cutting hedges there kind of the end of august september and cutting your hedges is very, very important as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah, no, Because, that. say for example, as I said, the laurel can grow to about 20 feet high. Okay. If that grows up in the air and keeps growing, growing, oh growing, it's going to be bare down at the base. Yeah. And really what you want is that to be solid from the base up oh, to the up. top. Okay. So every year you must keep them cut, whether it's cutting the top off it and cutting the sides. So mm -hmm. if this is your grisolinia hedge here and it's all planted along the line mm -hmm. like that, 
you'd cut the front of it, you'd cut the back of it, yeah. and you'd cut the top of it. Yeah, and I remember at that angle as well too, you were saying just to make sure that it does stay kind of that's bushy right. down the That's right, yeah, the bushy down the bottom, so yeah. you'd kind of taper it at the top, so that's actually letting light into the down base of it then as yeah. well. And if, if, is it too late if someone had forgotten to do it? Is well, it too late to do it now? Well, if you are pruning your hedge or cutting back your hedges now at the moment, I wouldn't cut them back very hard. Okay. Because as right. you say, it is that little bit late. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of cut them back, and you get a bit of a mild spell and new growth comes on. Uh oh, and you don't want that? No, not this time. No, not this time okay. of the year. And because the winds will actually burn that new growth. Mm. So most people would have had their hedges cut, say, the end of August. The okay. new growth would have come, but it would have hardened up then by the winter time. Right. So that would be the best thing. And another lovely one then as a formal one would oh, be your Fotinia red, red Robin. Now that absolutely. has become very popular over Massive. the last and couple of years. We've had lots of people coming in and asking, or questions coming in asking yes. about them as well yeah. too. They love the red robin they love the red robin and again like with the red robin it has the lovely red shoots the new shoots that come out are red right. and then the rest of the leaf is green yeah. now all of these are evergreen they okay. keep their leaves all year round so but that you had mentioned that it, they don't always have to be evergreen no so what they are don't. the other options so then? what i have then i know you looked at this and you thought it was dead but it's <laughs> not <laughs> i was like trish are you sure we're going to show the dead one this is a beech okay right so now, it's a young beech is it? it's a young beech mm -hmm. now this beech was green throughout all the year and then at this time of the year it turns the coppery color okay. some people love it some don't yeah and um, turns the coppery color and then the leaves fall off it in the springtime i when was going to say because that's the thing they, they don't drop like a lot of the the the, the trees um deciduous trees they would actually they yes, lose their leaves they lose their leaves but completely the beach, it does it hardens and stays on it stays really, on it? and then in the springtime you'll see the tiny little green shoots coming and they'll actually that's push they push off, off, right. off the leaf so it's not completely deciduous as you say it's yeah. there but it's not there either yeah. some of the leaves will fall with the wind yeah. and things and like get, that when the wind is blowing you get that little kind of rattling exactly. sound outside as well now it is lovely like it's lovely autumn colouring on mm. it um, again you wouldn't want to plant that in too wet of a place the, okay. be the beach likes a drier area right now that would be important when you're planting your hedging then as well and um, prepare the, the ground quite the ground. well yeah um, if it's very very wet you're better off to come in talk to us tell us the conditions of your soil mm -hmm. and we will pick out the right hedging for you mm -hmm. now if it's very wet you're talking about alders willows dogwoods things like that okay. now i don't have them here in front of us but if yeah. you come in we can show them to you uh, they would do in a very wet spot and what they will do is that the roots are able to take the moisture so they'll absorb the moisture from the ground okay so actually yeah so that would be good well. now say for example you do want the laurel or you do want the gristlinia or the red robin it's very very wet you will have to do the drainage okay or you will you'll have to rectify the problem see where the water is coming from maybe you're on a slope at the very bottom of the garden and the yeah. rain just falls yeah. right down. down well then what you need to do is to raise your soil level mm -hmm. put in loads of grit and stone try put in drainage pipes and things like that as well but come in have a chat with us they're the big things really as you said that that you know if people who are starting a new build or a new house that's fine well and good you can you can start that but if anyone who's kind of as you said gotten to the point now where they want to to do that now at a later stage in their house come in have a chat yeah, exactly. try and talk and there there's loads of options i, oh, I, was, I was amazed loads. the amount the ones yeah. you, you get yeah, and that's loads. great yeah so, so people can definitely find uh, the options so that's the formal that's yes. the the, the dicky bow the dicky the, bow the, the, one the out of the way <laughs> let's talk now about informal hedging because i believe you landed them all over around me I here did. so i did <laughs> so do tell me what what have we got here so say for example you didn't want the formal look we've been talking about you mm -hmm. wanted a bit of flower with it as well yeah now that one you have in your hand is a camellia people would know as a shrub that grows about six feet high you'd see them a lot out in muckrous gardens or whatever yes absolutely Fabulous, big beautiful flower and it like a rose as such and it flowers early in the season so you're talking about february march would be okay. the time for the flowering you can get them in the pinks you can get them in the whites yeah. if you've got a shady area where you want to put your hedge that's ideal for it mm -hmm. because they will tolerate the shade. The shade, well, yeah. that's great because that's always a big, big problem that some people would have is that, oh, I don't know, does it get enough sun? So exactly. The is a so great that option. will do for the shade. And once the flower goes, then it stays this green. For it does. The majority yeah. all, all year. All the year, all it's year evergreen. Round. It's evergreen. Now, the only thing with the camellia, you want to check your soil with it then as well. Okay, yeah. It to likes sure. the peaty soil. Right, right. So just to check that again, we have soil testing kits here in the garden centre just and to it's check easy it. To do. Very easy, easy to, to do. Very easy to do. Okay, right. I'm not going to pronounce 
pronounce this one because you said it earlier <laughs> and I was like going, the, you know, no, 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 the the Uanimous. 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 Now this one as well too would be very popular. I would see this in a lot of gardens. Yes, exactly. It's, like, this, it's got a lovely green leaf in the inside the and then it's edging. yellow edging around. Beautiful. It's lovely and bright then as well. Mm -hmm. And like, if you want to, you could even mix it in with your camellia. Now okay. the idea of an informal hedge that it might necessarily be all camellias or the all euonymus, one. you'd yeah. have a mixture. So you can see with the dark green leaf of the camellia and then the euonymus is the nice lighter leaf yeah. and so they'll go quite nice well together. Kind of, we'll kind of work Contrast, but together. when you're planting them, don't plant them every second one. Okay. Plant a group maybe of seven or nine of the camellias and right. then go on then in another big group then of a different type of one. Yet again, it brings you back to just ask the question. Exactly. Ask the question, yeah, ask yeah, the question. Yeah, there's no problem. Now, uh, this lovely little one in front, uh, We've, we've obviously covered it before as well too, the St. John's wort. Yes. Um, so this is also another form. It is, and if you wanted something a bit lower. Lower, Like yeah. that'll grow to about a metre, a metre and a half in height. Mm -hmm. A yellow flower from July to October will do in semi-shade. So it'll do in sun or semi-shade. Mm -hmm. And um, it's quite hardy then as well. So if you're living out beside the seaside area, that okay. would be a good, good one, one then as well. Now you do have two other little small ones there that are good for, for, uh, for low ones as well. That's tell right. Us about, tell us about those. Again now, I know we've seen Jer's gardens that he's gone out to and sometimes he borders the flower bed with small little low ones. That's and right, These yeah. would be ideal. They're small little hedging. Now what this one what is... What are they called? Uh, Ilex. Ilex. Ilex is this okay. one. Boxes is another Boxes. one. Yeah. Use another one, lavender. Mm -hmm. All these would be low growing and they could border flower beds. Great for framing a little bit. Exactly. Or even if it? you've got a path, say if you're in the house and you've got a path going down oh, and you yeah. want to just to frame the path, a lovely. lovely little. You don't want the likes of the laurel or the grisselinia yeah. because. You're too big. Too big, too yeah. big. So you want to pick something small yeah. and these are ideal then and as are well. Are they hardy? Are they, they Very hardy. Yeah. Again, can be grown in seaside areas then as well soil. if you want. Soil, as long as it's well drained. drained. Yeah. yeah can't okay. take wet soil either uh, but again as i said before just rectify the wet soil if it's there yeah uh, but they'd be ideal then as well and as i say lavender makes a lovely small hedge then as well mm -hmm. and it's got lovely scented blue flowers on it in the summertime then yeah. as well so it's just to assess the situation like is it a windbreak if it is a windbreak put down your laurel your crystallinia your escalonia a little bit, little bit of height a little yes. bit of bulk in yeah, there to, to exactly. take the sting out of the wind uh, so there's hedges for everywhere as i say if you're forming around your or around your flower beds or your paths you have these ones and then if you have an informal hedge mm. we were talking about bird care last week mm. i mean your informal hedge you could have your cotoneaster you could have your snowberries all these hedging plants can be got kind of november up until february mm -hmm. so as i say come in you could add an odd one through the ditch and that'll be great for Very the birds then as well. Ow! Oh, this next one here has uh, just gotten me here. Uh, <laughs> I put that on your side. Looking <laughs> for its attention. Uh, we have the beautiful holly uh, here, which is just beautiful in full berry at the moment. And of course, is always associated with that big C word. It but, is indeed. But, but uh, we can associate it with the H word. So this is another good hedging. It's for a good informal. hedging then as well. Yeah, the green holly, extremely tough. Again, you've got the white flower earlier on the year, the red berry this time of the year so around it's a Christmas. white flower earlier in the year? Yes, oh, it has nice. a white flower then as well. And um, it's evergreen as well and extremely tough. Yeah. They're beautiful now in formal hedges then as well, yeah. just to add it in here and there. And we also have a variegated form then of that as well which I'm saying is kind of gold in the middle and green around. Okay. And that one then is called Golden King. And that's a lovely one then as well. And you say a variegated version. Is that yes, another a type of It's a type of a holly. holly. Oh, yeah, it wow. is a type of a holly and variegated. Okay. We have a couple of different varieties of that now as well, if you want to call in and have a look at them. Yeah. And they're lovely. Again, if you had, you were putting all a green hedge, you could add in a couple of these as well, them, just yeah. to lighten them up then as well. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's kind of all of the, 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 the plant options. But, you know, if there were as you said at the start someone was starting out and you had an area to protect them a little bit you also do have the windbreaker That's there behind right. you as well yes, which is i do now if you're in a very very exposed area and even though these hedging stop the wind yeah just while they're starting for the first maybe two years to get them well rooted into the ground and so that they will yeah. be able to tolerate that wind you can put down a windbreak netting okay. again now with this windbreak netting people on facebook will be able to see it there's small little holes, holes in, in it, it so you don't have to make them i remember when we were out at jurors he was talking about that that's being a right. major thing yeah because you can just then kind of tie, cable tie them away and, and all that you stuff. can and also as well the wind will filter through it yes you do want it like that it's hitting the wind and then it's like a wind block going over on top of your ah, hedging yeah, yeah, yeah. so the wind is filtered through there's different sizes 
size holes you can get in this okay. but that one is actually quite good it's quite small so okay. it filters an awful lot of the wind now when you're putting them onto your stakes don't screw them or nail them directly onto your stake if you've got a lash on the outside of it right. and then nail into that yeah. and then it won't because if you screw directly into that what will happen out. then when the wind is pulling at yeah. it it'll tear it because the wind will it's it's coming oh you know, it is it is and we just storms. we just have to, have to be prepared for prepared, it yeah now i suppose the other thing then with hedging is how to plant it or what do you use when you're planting or do you dig holes or do you dig trenches or whatever yeah yeah of course so i suppose like if you had a long like people coming in planting hedges they could have 50 meters of it mm -hmm. so really you're not going to be digging 50 holes or 100 holes or whatever yeah. so even if you dug a long trench it's just so much easier at the end of the day mm -hmm. you can put some compost or as we were talking last week about the well rotted farmyard manure yes, that we sell in bags here yeah, yeah. that you could put that in the base of it and then you could put in your plant. We also have a slow release fertilizer then as well. Mm -hmm. It's a six month slow release fertilizer. You'd put down a fistful we'll give it in a that as well. It'll give, It'll give a it a great start. start. Yeah. But like anything that you plant this time of the year, make sure to firm them down well okay. and keep them firmed down well. Check yeah. them maybe in a month's time again, just to heal your foot, just to firm them down so okay. that they're actually going to get well rooted well into rooted the ground. As everything yeah. comes loose in the wind and exactly. the rain, which is yeah. roll out, yeah. roll up probably on the way. Listen, Trish, that's fantastic. Lots of great um, options here for people who are hedging. It can still be done at this time of year. If anything, it's the best time to do it. So do uh, call in to, uh, to Trish uh, or Jara here in the garden centre or to your local garden centre and find out and hopefully have a nice little framed hedging around your garden. Trish, as always, thank you very much. Thanks, An ultimate show next, <laughs> this week. Uh, do join us next week for the very last garden show of the year. We will talk to you then, and until then, happy gardening. <laughs>